Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are, that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. If you have a health challenge you need help with, if you have skin, skin health challenges, if you have questions about ingredients or formulations or products, or if you just have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase longevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off the site, or you can call 866-735-2470 for more info. And don't forget to ask about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, and make the world a better place. Help your neighbor and make money at the same time. Work out of your home. Make your own hours. Make as little or as much money as you like. $10,000 a month is not unheard of. $100,000 a month. I know people making $100,000 a month. You can make a $500 a month, $100 a month. You can just get your products at the wholesale price if that's all you want to do. All for a one-time $25 fee. Call 866-735-2470 for more info. Or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We are talking about my absolute favorite subject to talk about, at least in the world of health, which is uh, the electrical energy, the energy nature, electricity being a, uh, a metaphor for energy in a way. Electricity is how energy shows up at the most fundamental physical level, but there's also emotional energy, and there's mental energy, and there is spiritual energy. Last uh, few programs, we've been talking about the relationships between clogs and diseases, we said disease is really a clogging situation. To understand disease, you just got to understand plumbing, basically. It's about clogs. It's about lack of movement, lack of flow. My mom is uh, falling apart. She's 85 years old. She had all kinds of surgeries, all kinds of adhesions, all kinds of fibroids. And if you look at her, she's like all put together crooked. And she's in constant chronic pain, and now she doesn't have a lot. Of, she's complaining about not having a lot of energy. Well, yeah, if the energy can't flow through the body effectively because of uh, surgeries and adhesions and scar tissue, and out of a, a physical body that's out of alignment, you're not going to have energy, and ultimately it's going to show up as disease. This happens as we get older. It's pretty typical, actually, as we get older, especially as, as, the, uh, uh, as the effects of surgery accrue, as the effects of bad living accrue, as the effects of bad walking accrue, as the effects of lack of uh, exercise accrue, as the effects of lack of nutrition accrue. All this really it shows up as ill health because of a clogging situation, a lack of movement. Good health, from a physical perspective, is movement of electrical energy in the body on a physical standpoint. From a physical perspective, electrons, pieces of electricity, moving through tissues and cells of the body, making the living body electrically efficient. Healing is voltage, as Dr. Jerry Tennant says in his book. He has a new book actually about healing is voltage. At least it's new to me. I'm sure when it came out. It's about the eyes, about eye health, the eyes being extremely electrical. 
Dr. Tennant makes the case from, uh, from, uh, that, uh, uh, from a uh, health perspective and a disease perspective, it's about the movement of electricity. Voltage is pressure. Voltage is push and pull. Voltage is the amount of push or pressure electrical energy has. And negative voltage is a suction. It's a pulling. You've got positive voltage and negative voltage or positive push and negative push. Negative push is just pull or suction. So you've got push and suction. And that combination of push and suction leads to flow. Now, Dr. Tennant's talking from an electrical perspective. Electrical energy is the foundation of physical reality. It's the physical manifestation of pure energy. So when Dr. Tennant says healing is voltage, what he really means is physical healing is voltage. But we've said this so many times, and I'm going to continue to say it, and I'll probably say it more and more, because it's really where health resides and disease resides, is in the four dimensions of healing. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. So electrical energy is physical, but there's emotional energy. And then there is mental energy. And emotional, ener emotional energy, energy and mental energy are like two sides of the same coin. You don't have one without the other. And then you have spiritual energy. And make no mistake about it. We are under leveraging these pa uh, levels of healing. We're under leveraging the spiritual connection to health and disease. We're under leveraging the mental aspect of health and disease and the emotional aspect. And even worse, we're in encouraged to under leverage it because the medical model can't make any money off of it. So we're encouraged to under leverage it. We're encouraged to dismiss it. We're encouraged to marginalize it, even though it's hidden in plain sight that it's obvious that it's true. That's why we have the placebo effect. The placebo effect blows modern medicine out of the water. Modern medicine, all the truths of modern medicine become relative truths, not absolute truths when you account for the, when you just factor in the placebo effect. Because that says you don't need a drug, you just need to think. And that's not me making it up from airy fairy Boulder, Colorado hippie talk. That is hardcore medicine. It has to be filtered out when they do studies. Nobody ever talks about the placebo effect. But it still sounds airy fairy to most people, not probably not to you guys listening to this, but to most people, because we're, we're uh, taught to dismiss it, to think it's silly. So from a spiritual perspective, a mental perspective, emotional perspective, you have uh, analogs to the physical perspective. So you have electrical energy from a physical standpoint, and you have emotional energy and mental energy and spiritual energy. And they're being under leveraged. Read Bruce Lipton, Bruce Lipton's book, The Biology of Belief, came out in the late 90s. Greg Braden, every, Deepak Chopra's been talking about it for decades. The physical plane is what we're most familiar with, and so it's kind of logical, and it's, it's not, it doesn't take a lot of creative thinking to, to buy into the fact that you can just do things physically. But I can tell you this, as somebody who's been heal, working in the healing business now, health business, for 35 years, not everybody gets better when they do physical strategies. A lot of people will do everything right physically and still feel like crap or get cancer or, or have some kind of health challenge because they're not taking, they're not leveraging the other levels, the other dimensions of health. Physical level is what we're most familiar with. So it makes sense. It's logical that we'll start to work at, that we'll want to work at that level. But Guess what? It's a pretty unsophisticated, naive, anachronistic from a time gone by and pretty much uh, ineffective, or at least a lot of times, ineffective strategy to focus on the physical level only, even if it's logical. This is the field of activity where modern medicine works, where the pharmacomedical model works. And you know what? From, uh, from a certain perspective, the pharmacomedical model, it's effective. At least, at least in terms of surgery, at least in terms of heroic medicine. Modern medicine can do incredible things, stitching things back on and transplanting tissues and organs. And, and even, they can even make the blind see and the deaf hear with certain kinds of implants. Yes, blind people can see and deaf people can hear. This is, this is like miraculous stuff, right? All right, I'm Pharmacist Benny, 442 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. On the bright 
Feinstein. I'm pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at, or on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You can also purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Got new products up. We have more products coming out, uh, more formulations coming out here this month, next month, next few months anyway. And if you're an esthetician or you're in the skin business, we also have a wholesale program, and we're also doing... Uh, peels and esthetician back bar products too. So anyway, check check out all our True Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. So I've been really getting into electrical energy and the energy in the body. And you know, if you're in the health business, you want to work at the most powerful level you can work, the most foundational level you can work. Nutrition is a foundational level, but nutrition itself is founded by the movement of electric, electric, electricity, electrical energy. Some of the papers, I, I love reading papers. People always ask me what kind of books I read. I, I read a lot of papers. And not necessarily epidemiological papers like studies. I don't really like, I don't pay too much attention to studies. Oh, they did a study and they found that 25% of these people had this problem or that problem. They're too, it's too hard to control for people. Those are called epidemiological studies. Epidemiological studies are where they take a bunch of people. Demo means the people, like democracy, epidemiology, demo. Uh, they take a bunch of people, and they find out what they ate, and then they put a, do a bunch of statistical stuff, and then they say, well, people who ate this way had more cancer, and people who ate that way had more heart disease, and that's why you get all this controversy about all the different diets and all the different ways that you're supposed to live because you can't do epidemia you can't make conclusions about humanity as a whole about the human organism from epidemiological studies and any doctor or healthcare professional and there's some I hear there's a bunch that are somewhat famous that I hear all the time who, and they're always quoting these epidemiological studies telling you what to do but the problem is you can cher cherry pick data and you can't control for all the variables. So I just don't pay attention to those. But what I like to read is articles about, about the hardcore science, about what's happening inside the body, what's happening inside a cell. And so I'm reading papers like these days, The Bioelectric Code, Reprogramming Cancer and Aging from the Interface of Mechanical and Chemical Microenvironments. What that means is, is programming. They are, cancer, by the way, is one of the main places where uh, the electrical nature of a cell is being studied because cancer cells are recognized, well recognized, by the way, to be... Uh, electrically different than regular cells. Growth and electricity are intimately related. How a cell divides and grows is an elect, like everything else, but especially how a cell divides and grows is an electrical phenomena, and a cancer cell has a disturbed electronics, long-term disturbed electronics. Anyway, so this uh, paper is about how between mechanical and chemical, you have electrical, so that the chemical works via the electrical. The chemical converts electrical energy and then you get a mechanical mov movement, whether it's a cellular movement or a tissue movement or, or organ movement. Emerge, this is another one. Emergent colloidal dynamics in electromagnetic fields. That talks about how when you have uh, colloids, big pieces of electrically active particles floating around, you get an electrical field. That's why it's important to move the blood and that's why it's important to move the lymph. Is because when you move the blood and the lymph, you upregulate, you amp up the electrical energy in the blood. A, co a colloid is, is the, uh, refers to the size of stuff, we'll just call it stuff, that's floating around in the blood. Albumin is one example of a colloid that's floating around in the blood. All those things that carry around cholesterol are colloids that are floating around in the blood. These colloids, these, these chunks of stuff, as they float, they generate electrical energy, and the more the, the, the blood is moving, the more electricity is generated. Guess what? The less the blood is moving, the less electricity is generated, and that's the problem with sticky blood. That's why you gotta move your blood, and you gotta move your lymph. It's all about energy, and any health program or healthcare professional who is not at least working chemically at the energy level, at least understanding the, the energy nature of chemistry, the energy nature of nutrition, is, not, is going to be uh, under leveraging it. It's not going to be using it appropriately. But if you understand that vitamin C it is a highly, highly, highly energetic compound. 
you'll understand why it can be used for cancer and for collagen production and for healing and for the immune system and all the various things it could be used for because it's working energetically. So we have a medical model that can do all kinds of things at the macro level, but unfortunately, it, at the micro, micro level, the quantum level, it's primitive. Understandably, perhaps, although it has been 120 years since we've started to figure out the quantum thing. Modern medicine can print kidneys, can print skin. Three, can 3D print organs of the body. I mean, that's amazing to me. Augmented reality, where you can have a patient's big data, blood pressure and blood sugar, superimposed in a display on top of his body. Or uh, you could have the organ that needs to be cut superimposed on top of the body so the, the surgeon just has to trace. That's augmented reality, virtual reality. They can, they can do surgery in China. They can have a surgeon in China do brain surgery on somebody in uh, Denver, Colorado through robotics. Just think about that. They can have a surgeon moving his hands in Beijing and take out a tumor from a patient across the world. I mean, this is like, we're in the Star Wars era. Not, it's not the future, it's now. Yesterday, uh, last month, I saw an article about a paralyzed student who was, who, uh, he was an engineering student at Florida International University, and he was paralyzed, he was in a car accident, and he was paralyzed, neck down, I believe, and he walked across the stage. How? They gave him an exoskeleton. Yes, this is the latest thing. Not the latest. This is already here. We're going to have exoskeletons so that the paralyzed will be able to walk. And it'll all be controlled with your thoughts. And by the way, they have machines now that control your, that can control things with thoughts. They can actually find, they, uh, d d determine if you're lying or not. I mean, what's ahead of the, uh, the stuff that's ahead from the modern medical model perspective is absolutely crazy. But for all the incredible advantage, uh, advances and technologies and devices and, and tools of the medical model, making the blind see, I mean, that blows me away. That's like biblical. It's like, you know, Jesus kind of stuff. We still can't handle the body and health and wellness or illness and disease at the more subtle levels. We still can't figure out, the modern medical model can't, how to take, how to address our physical reality at the, the higher levels. At least it doesn't talk about it. Of course, we don't need the medical model to think to, you, to leverage the mind and to leverage our emotions and to leverage our spirituality. Every level is responsive to the level above it, or the, the denser energy levels are responsive to the more subtle energy levels. So the physical is responsive to the emotional, and the emotional is responsive to the mental, and the mental is responsive to the spiritual. And that's why it's in that order, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. If you want to be healthy, you have to be healthy on all four levels. We have a physical reality. That's obvious. We have an emotional reality. We have literally have a, an emotional perspective. We see the world through emotional, through emotional lenses, through an emotional lens, whether we know it or not. And because the emotions affect the physical, you know, there's something called broken heart syndrome, believe it or not. You guys probably know that. You, you get depressed, you lose your husband or wife, and you, you get heart disease. Part of your heart literally dies. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be, be back on the bright side. Anytime. All right, we are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple lines open for you. Just get to a couple of stories. And then we'll get your calls, 844-236-6010. We'll continue talking about energy and electricity. And I'm going to be, be talking a lot more about it in the coming months and years as I, as I hone my game, as I refine my game and understanding of the body. It becomes more and more obvious to me that if you're not focusing on the electrical energy, you're missing a powerful place, a powerful point, a powerful leverage point for taking care of the body. Likewise, if you're not focusing on the other dimensions of healing, mental, emotional, and spiritual. I've known it for a long time, but more and more it becomes, it becomes really critical because our world today is messed up and we are really sick as a culture, as human beings. It's crazy the amount of degenerative diseases that we have, 
the amount of people who are dealing with de degenerative diseases, the amount of people that are on medication, the amount of, of young people on medication, multiple medications. I mean, it's just an absolute disaster. The, health, the, the state of our health, our, our health care, and of our health in terms of chronic long-term diseases, long-term progressive diseases, is just as terrible as the state of our political situation and our economic situation. And, you know, it should, why would it be any different? It's because our beliefs are whacked out. We're living in an, a world that is far, 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 far more sophisticated than our abilities and our uh, institutional abilities to manipulate it. The world is way more sophisticated and we've known about it now for 120 years. We are in a quantum world and we're operating with, uh, with uh, macro renaissance middle age t utensils or tools. And we live in a quantum world. That's really what all this energy stuff is about, by the way. It's about manipulating our world at the most fundamental basic strata levels, the most fundamental levels, which is the tiny, 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 tiny world of the quantum, which is controlled by spiritual, mental, emotional, as well as electrical energies. And we will definitely be talking more about that and it has a lot to do with how healthy or how unhealthy uh, we are. It's not just airy-fairy. It's physically relevant. All right. This is from the journal uh, from Scientific News, or Science News magazine. Microbes can redeem themselves to fight disease. It turns out that bad bacteria, so-called bad bacteria, like Listeria and Clostridium, these are really nasty bacteria, can actually be used, genetically modified, to deliver uh, n nutrients, and to deliver drugs, actually not nutrients, but to deliver drugs to various parts of the body. They can deliver drugs to the bones to enhance treatments of osteoporosis. They can deliver drugs to a, a tox, a chemotherapy to, to cancer cells. They're actually trying to use bacteria, bad bacteria, as delivery systems. This is what I'm talking about, Man, trying to manipulate the body at the, at the physical level and, and really doing some incredible things, but being ignorant at the, uh, at the biochemical level. Why don't we figure out why the tumor's there? Why don't we figure out what's the biochemistry, the biochemical biochemical milieu of that tumor so we don't have to get them. Why don't we figure out the biochemical milieu of a degeneration, degenerative conditions like osteoporosis so we don't have to send drugs to the area? Along the same lines, human beings to live forever in 30 years with immortality's new plastic surgery. I don't know if that means it's called biological immortality, never growing old, and they're coming out with all kinds of strategies for doing it based on the lobster, based on lobsters. Yes, lobsters live to be more than 100 years old, and they have no signs of aging. Why? Because they have a special enzyme called telomerase. And that enzyme uh, keeps, keeps the little strings, the shoestrings on the genetics, long. When the shoestrings uh, get shorter and shorter and shorter, we age. So this enzyme keeps the, the, the shoestrings long. And there are all kinds of telomerase and telomerase inhibitors. And you, if you're a little bit involved in the news, you've probably heard about them. Or in the health world, you've probably heard about telomeres and tel telomerase. Longevity has a product, a telomere-enhancing, supposed telomere-enhancing product. You don't take nutrition, in my opinion, this is. You don't take nutrition because you want to extend your telomeres. You take nutrition because you need nutrition. So the idea of extending your telomeres with specific nutrition, to me, it's just kind of, it's sort of marketing. Because if you've got a crappy body and you try to extend your telomeres, it's not going to work. But if you have a good, healthy, strong body, your telomeres are going to naturally be degraded at a, a slower pace. So the trick is to stay healthy. Again, once we understand the fundamental and foundational levels of biochemistry, we won't need to worry about telomere enhancers, telomerase enhancers. This is, here's another article. This one's a little bit more leverages the uh, invisible world a little bit more effectively. Joy from giving lasts much longer than joy for getting. I like that. When you give something, the joy that you, uh, the joy that you enjoy, the joy that you enjoy from giving lasts longer than the joy that you enjoy from getting something. Why is that? Well, joy is a chemical phenomena, or at least it has a chemical analog, a neurochemical analog. When you're in joy and love and giving and loving, you're secreting oxytocin and dopamine and your serotonin levels are more stable. 
Your neurochemistry is more efficient and more effective at living life when you do the virtues. When you're joyful, when you're giving, when you're generous, when you're forgiving, when you're loving. Yes, all of these seemingly airy-fairy emotional aspects of our being work neurochemically, which works electrically. Understanding the electrical nature of our bodies will allow us to leverage every level above the electricity. You'll know, how to th you'll know why it's important to think correctly. When you think correctly and when you emote correctly, and by correctly I'm talking about ways that make you feel good, you're actually facilitating the flow of electrical energy, which facilitates healing. And if your doctor doesn't write you a prescription for thinking better, he's not leveraging the most foundational levels of health. If he's not writing you a prescription for being more spiritual, he's not leveraging the most foundational levels of health, nor are his patients. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Reed is in Italy and has been holding on a long time. Reed, what's up, buddy? Hey, Ben, how are you? I'm doing good. Are you really in Italy? Or is that a... Yes, sir. Uh, Where about? Right by in uh, Maniago or Bayonk, and, northern and what do you Italy. Do? What are you doing out there? I'm in the Air Force. Oh, nice. Okay, good. And you're listening to us on the base? Yeah, another... Are you nope, out there? No, nope, I'm the... just at my house. Oh, you're at your house. Okay, good. So what's going on, Reed? Yep. Um, so I got a question for my mom and my wife. Okay. I got it, I got it scripted here, so it's going to sound like I'm reading, but okay. my mom has had a twitch in her upper eyelid for quite some time to relieve it. She... She's had a few shots of... A few shots of Botox she's had. Oh, that's Is terrible. Is that Botox How old... going to permanently... Go ahead. I, I, so that's terrible. The twitching is an electrical phenomena, and it's usually a sign that there's some kind of disturbance with electricity. As If you've been listening to the program, you know what I'm talking about. Electrolytes. Any kind of twitching electrolytes. Now, it could be that she's not absorbing her electrolytes, or there's adrenal or kidney problems. I mean, there could be a lot of issues so it's, that, are, that are underneath electrolyte deficiency. So it's not necessarily taking the electrolytes, but that's the first thing to do. Um, but Beyond Tangy Tangerine is perfect for that. Vegetable juices. Um, the B complex is also important. Again, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the vegetable juice. You want to hang on, Reed? I, I hate to make you hold again, but yep, we got a commercial yep. break. Okay, thanks, buddy. Yep. I'm Farm Suspend, 844 236 6010 is our number. Got lines open. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side talking to Reed in Italy about eye twitching. Is that the only question you had, Reed? Or do you have something else? I had one for my I had one for my wife, but oh. uh, quick about my mom again. Is, is that Botox going to permanently damage no. the nerves in her eyelids? Well, no. if they do it correctly, it won't. But it's just not taking care of the problem. And uh, because the, uh, the electrolytes and the electrical system runs everything, especially the heart and the brain, she's running higher risks for other health issues if she has an adrenal or kidney problem that's causing this. She's, the kidneys... she's taken level of thy thyroxin before. Okay. It's probably like a thyroid. Could be yeah, like she's a thyroid taking a thyroid too. drug. Yeah, that's, that's, yep. that doesn't really say anything. Everybody's got thyroid problems, and th levothyroxine is a silly drug, really one of the silliest. Yeah. Yep. Although occasionally people get a little energy from it. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, I'd be looking at electrolytes. First things first, give her some, see what happens, like lots of them. You pee them out so you can't overdose on them. Uh, bones, uh, yep. uh, vegetable juices, and beyond tangy tangerine. See if that makes a difference all day long. Uh, if not, you might want to work, you have to start working on some digestive issues and blood sugar issues. The biggest reason why people have adrenal problems and, and kidney problems is because of blood sugar. So you have to work there. Uh, but first things first, get her on the BTT and get her on, um, uh, or have her start doing lots of veggie juices. I, I would be doing Vitamix veggie juices before she goes to bed, especially. Does she notice it's worse before she goes to bed? Or I guess now she doesn't notice anything. Um, I'm not too sure. What were you going to ask for your, uh, for your wife? Uh, my wife's 13 weeks pregnant. Uh, she has hemorrhoids, and she's taken Prozac a few years ago for depression. Besides taking, like, a healthy start pack from longevity, Matt, her, keep a regular. Uh, few pieces. You, the most important thing with hemorrhoids is she doesn't push. And, we, and that's hemorrhoids usually follow constipation or, or sitting sometimes if she's, if she's sedentary. So moving her body around, but also... Uh, 
also uh, improving her circulation. Uh, as a, hemorrhoids are a kind of pooling of blood in the bottom of the body. So uh, uh, having her moving around. Uh, also, uh, as far as nutrition goes, uh, anything that can, if she has digestive issues, anything that can, that'll keep her from, uh, anything to avoid eating problem foods, foods that clog her up especially. Uh, you can also use things like magnesium and vitamin C and more fiber to keep her regular. So movement and regularity are most important things and also eliminating problem foods for her. And congratulations too, by the way. And thanks, thanks Thank for uh, holding for so long. Appreciate it. Take care. Oh, I hope you read. Thank you. Yep. All right, uh, let's go to Sylvia in New York. Good morning, Sylvia. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello? Hello, Sylvia. Yeah, I have a question about vitamin B12. My blood test said I was deficient in vitamin B12, so I was wondering if eggnogs, like raw egg yolks, would raise the vitamin yeah. B12 if well, they're raw. Yeah, the problem with getting your B12 from food is B12 is not really made in food. B12 is made in bacteria that are in the food, good bacteria, bacteria that are in the chickens or bacteria that are in the animals, bacteria that are in the, in the soil. But because the bacteria is so messed up, I wouldn't count on it, but you could. But here's the thing. It's very rare to be deficient in vitamin B12. The thing is, when they says that Columbia University hang on, sweetheart, hang on, hang on, yeah. Sylvia, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. When they measure B12, they measure the blood. Uh-huh. They don't measure the cells. The B12 doesn't work in the blood. It works in the cells. Are you with me? Yes. So when they measured you, they, didn't, they don't know what's in the cells. They just know what's in the blood. And they're assuming that because it's in the blood, it's low in the blood, it's going to be low in the cells. That's a bad assumption. So, uh-huh. so I'm not convinced when I hear about vitamin B12 deficiency because it's a very hard vitamin to be deficient in. For one thing, it's stored. It's one of the B uh-huh. vitamins that's stored. And for another uh-huh. thing, it's a B vitamin uh, that is so unbelievably potent that you only need the, like a speck of it in the entire bloodstream. A speck, uh-huh. literally. I mean, it's just a powerful electromagnetic vi- nutrient. All v- nutrients are electromagnetic, but B12 is the most. It's the only vitamin, it's the only nutrient that's purple which is the highest uh-huh. vibrating color. It's an amazing substance, and uh, B12 deficiency is not all that common. Here's the problem with that, my dear. You, are you feeling uh-huh. lethargic? Are you feeling tired? Um, I, I would like to be more energetic. Okay. Are you symptomatic is what I'm saying. I mean, did they test your B12? Probably. Because Okay. So what happens is if you believe it's the B12, you're not going to be approaching the real problem. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? You'll say, oh, I'm going to take B12. Get a B12 shot. See what happens. If you get a B12 uh-huh. shot and you feel better... Uh, that's great. You know, keep or stick with it. That's how I would do it. But if not, there's a lot of other things that you want it to be doing. You want to be doing all your B vitamins, not just B12. B12 stored. B1's not stored. B2's not stored. You know, the other B vitamins aren't stored. So B12 is stored. Electrolytes. Uh, uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a great source of electrolytes, vegetable juices, uh, in addition to the B vitamins. Uh, keeping your blood sugar down. Keeping, making blood sure your cortisol... V- lots the vegetables of vegetables. And the vegetable juice. What color lots vegetables? of them. Just I'm sorry, what? any kind of vegetable? No, whatever you like. Just go okay, easy on the beets I... and the carrot. Easy on the beets and the carrot. Go savory. So I mean, I, it, I'm not saying the B12 shot might not help you. It might get a B12 shot, but if it doesn't help you, there's other things you could do, and you should be doing them anyway. I don't All right, Sylvia. Egg yeah. yolks and eggnog. Egg yolks know. are great. I don't know about eggnog. I don't even really know what eggnog is, to tell you the truth. Uh, raw, but raw egg y- yolks mixed in milk and um, other rum? things like, like um, nutmeg. And, well, that's and delicious. Well, Go they for make it. eggnogs out of raw egg yolks, and I thought that would be a source of vitamin B12. Yeah. That is well, cheap, that well is depending on the chickens, yet. depending on the chickens, you know, you don't know necessarily. Whale eggs instead of chicken eggs. Is that better for yeah, well? There's no problem with that. Eggs are eggs. An egg is an egg cell. It's got everything, whether it comes from a quail or whether it comes from an, a chicken or whether it comes from any other animal that's got an, you know, that's laying eggs. Eggs are uh-huh. cells. You're eating cells with everything that a cell needs to grow and thrive and be healthy. So I'm, you know, I'm a big believer in eggs, but not just the yolk. Do the white too. Why just the yolk? The white's the white's a good source of protein. Albumin. I, 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 go, Sylvia. Anything else? I thought raw egg yolks were unhealthy. I mean, raw egg whites were unhealthy, so the only thing that was healthy was raw egg yolk. Well, that's, that's a medical, medical uh, dogma. That is not true at all. Uh-huh. Uh, some, uh-huh. I'm, usually they'll say the egg whites. 
I haven't heard just the egg yolks, but either way, it's medical dogma. It's silly. You need them both. The, the white oh. contains albumin, which is a, a very important protein. And then the egg, uh, the yolk is the most powerful source of nutrition in all of the food world. There's nothing Even more powerful well. and well-rounded. Go ahead. Even for B12. For everything. But again, it depends on the chickens. Because I was wondering if, if raw egg yolks are just as healthy as poached eggs. Because Dr. Wallace mm, is always raw saying is always poached best. egg. Raw is always best. Make sure it's fresh. You don't want to be dealing with any salmonella issues. Make sure it's fresh and not cracked. Because the egg nogs are raw egg yolks. Yes. So, uh, so I was wondering if raw egg yolks would be a good way to solve the vitamin B12. Yes, ma'am. Do your raw egg yolks. Sylvia, I'm going to go. I got one more call I want to get to. Thank you for your call. I'm not really sure how I kept going around in circles there with Sylvia, but... B12 and, and uh, nutrients in eggs are only going to be as, uh, as densely present as the chicken is healthy and as the chicken is fed. If the chicken is sitting there like most chickens, uh, eating soy and corn and things that chickens don't eat and, and kept in close quarters with other chickens and fed antibiotics, you know, you're going to have one kind of egg. If it's a, a good, healthy chicken, free range and, and uh, clucking around the farm, eating, pecking at insects, it's going to be a completely different egg. So you got to go. It all depends on the chicken. Colleen in Canada, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's oh, going on? Good, good morning, Ben. Um, we were listening to you yesterday, and you were talking about pH. We bought my husband, due to his health issues, a Kagan water machine. They're made in Japan. Have you ever heard of those? No. Is it a pH balance machine or something like that? Put, put yeah, alcohol, it, makes... it makes the water in several settings, and you can go from a really super acidic water to the 7 pH. It does it with electrolytes? And apparently in the hospitals, they're designed to sterilize equipment. Is, do you think there's any truth to that? Well, hang on. Hang on. Let me ask you something. Is it, does it deliver electrolytes? How does it, keep, make, how does it change the pH of the water with, chlor, with chloride and with sodium and with various ions? Or do you know? Uh, well, it goes through some, it's got like baffles on the inside. And I spell guess that, I would you know say what? that I'm, I'm out of time. I don't know what the machine, I don't know what the machine is, but spell it for me. I'm going to do some research. How do you spell uh, the name of the machine? K-A-G-E-N. And they're built Kagan. in Japan. Okay, it sounds Kagan familiar. Water machine. I'm going to look into that. Usually these are, elect these are machines that deliver electrolytes to the water, negative or positive electrolytes. Uh, but I, I haven't heard of the... I mean, I, it sounds vaguely familiar, but I don't know much about the Kagan machine. But let me look into it, and then uh, I'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? Okay. Are you, is your show over, or are you we're going to over. commercial? No, we're over, Colleen. Uh, Call back bad. tomorrow if you want to chat. But oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do some okay. research on... Uh, it's a Kangen machine, not a Kagan machine, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. That's it for now. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out our True Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. Start yourself a business this year. Start a business that makes the world a better place. Call 866-735-2470 for more info or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.